In this video, I want to demonstrate how to use the new SOAP message feature in ServiceNow.com to handle outbound SOAP messages, uh, SOAP web services coming from ServiceNow.com. In order to demo this, we're going to send some incidents from a source uh, instance over to a destination instance. And so, in this example, we're going to send all incidents that are created by Rob Woodburn and we're going to use web services to send them to our other instance that has no incidents uh, created by Rob Woodburn. In order to do this, first off, in our destination system, we're going to create a web service import set to accept uh, the outbound web services from our source. And so in order to do this, we'll go to our system web services. We'll create a new incident web service import. We'll call this incident. And we're going to copy the fields. Since this is just a simple demo, and we're going to just do everything straight from one incident to another incident, we're going to copy all the fields from the incident table into this web service and we're going to create. Uh, so as you can see here, we have a transform map ready to go um, going from our source table to our target table of incident for this example. Um, we are going to auto map matching fields. We're not going to do anything complicated here. Um, we will We're going to coalesce on the, uh, let's just for this example, let's coalesce on the number. And we're not going to make it any more complicated than that. We're going to click update. All right, and so if we go to our web service list here, um, let's refresh it. we should see incident. If we click on incident, we now have our WSDL to our web service, our system web service import set. So what we'll do here is we're going to copy this WSDL. And now we're going to use the new SOAP message feature. And so if we just type SOAP here, uh, this, this does require uh, system web service uh, plugins to be enabled. Click on SOAP message. We're going to create a new SOAP message. We're going to call this uh, demo destination. We're going to give it the WSDL that was provided by our destination instance. Lock that up here. We're going to download the WSDL and um, let's generate sample SOAP messages. So what it's going to do now is it's going to query this WSDL and it's going to determine what messages are available through this WSDL and we'll get these messages here. Really, we're only going to be interested in the insert message right here. So let's click on the insert. So this is going to allow us to insert records into our web service, our web service import set here at our destination. As you can see here on the insert, we're given all the fields that are available to us. And I believe in all cases, they are optional fields. So for this example, let's see, we're going to need to use basic authentication. And we're going against the demo instance, and typically uh, they have the demo, the default credentials there as ITIL, ITIL. So we'll save those. And then let's only map, for this example, we're only going to map a small number of fields. And I think everything else we're just going to let be a default. So in essence, the, sh the SOAP message that we're going to send is just going to send active 
the number field, the assigned to field, the caller ID field, and the short description. And then notice here for their values, I'm putting in the special notation, meaning this is a variable, and the variable name will be number. Okay, and then we've now saved that. Um, let's test. Uh, let's test this. So we're going to specify what our parameters are. One parameter was active, and let's just set that to true. We'll hit submit. All right, and then just for to speed this up a little bit, I've added all the other parameters. So here's the active one we just added. Um, I've gone ahead and added all the other parameters. These correspond with the variables uh, identified in our script. So active number assigned to all show up uh, down here with some test values. And now that we have these fields here and, and those variables have been identified in the script, we can actually run a test and so we can click on this test link right here. And look at our XML. And it looks like it was inserted properly. So if we go to the demo instance and look at our incidents, and if we look at our by number, there is there is our incident. Okay, so uh, we know that our SOAP message is working properly. Now all we need to do is we can go back to this insert function. Let's shrink this down a bit. Doesn't need to be so big. All right, um, now we can, there's a nice little feature here that says preview the script usage. What it's going to do is it's gonna take, it's gonna embody this, uh, a blob of XML here and then it's going to look at all these parameters that we put here and it's going to generate the script that we're going to need to use. As you can see here we just create a new SOAP message we this is the name of the the web service and this is the message that we're going to use the insert message. Here are all the parameters that we defined with their values that we set in here. We're going to copy this now remember, our goal is to take all incidents that were logged by Rob Woodburn. So we're going to, let's just do a background script. Created a background script given this code snippet that was provided by the SOAP message uh, example. And I wrapped it around a while loop that looks for caller ID of Rob Woodburn. All right, run the script. And let's check our destination and let's look for all the callers that equal Rob Woodburn. As you can see, there's our incidents. There's Rob Woodburn as the caller. Uh, we passed in the short description field and there's our three incidents, um, just like our, our original. So that's how you use the new SOAP message feature uh, in servicenow.com. It obviously cuts down a lot of the scripting requirements that you have to do. It'll generate that sample script that all you need to do then is put a wrapper in, of scripting around it and um, you can perform some very powerful SOAP uh, requests very quickly.